crackberry.com. Hi folks, I'm Joseph Holder of crackberry.com and today I'm going to take a look at the Blackberry Torch 9850. Basically the same phone as the 9860 that Kevin reviewed, uh, but this is of course the CDMA version where the 96, excuse me, 9860 is the uh, GSM version. Uh, this is Blackberry's first true full touchscreen phone. Uh, the Torch, of course, uh, Torch 9800, of course, had the uh, does of course have the slide out keyboard and uh, the Storm. Uh, in my opinion, really isn't a full touchscreen device because it did have that clicking screen. This is nothing like the Storm. Uh, it, it's bright, it's responsive. You don't have to click on the screen, and this thing is uh, perfectly sculpted. Uh, to fit in my hands and to fit pretty darn well. Uh, if you take a look at the back of the device, it's where you can first see it. Uh, it's a little difficult to see on camera and in pictures, uh, but this back is actually sculpted. Uh, the, the battery door kind of comes in a bit and leaves raised areas up here at the camera and at the bottom end of the device. Uh, but these raised areas make this fit uh, perfectly uh, in your hands. And the interesting thing about this phone is it really is a landscape phone. It really is supposed to sit in your hands in landscape mode, honestly, because that's how the device feels most comfortable. Uh, on the ends of the device are uh, the waterfalls, where the device kind of flows off of the edge and falls off in a waterfall, as, as they call it at, at uh, Research in Motion. Uh, but the waterfalls are both elegant, pretty, if you will, but they also serve a function. It makes it so the device fits comfortably in the hands and doesn't go anywhere while you're trying to use it. Uh, it's, it's a really good design choice in my opinion and I'm actually very impressed at Research in Motion uh, for having done so uh, because it, the device does fit so well in the hands. Um, moving around the device, of course, one of the things a lot of people will uh, take note of pretty quickly are these raised buttons at the front. And uh, honestly, as I saw them in pictures and as I have heard about them on reviews, I became less and less happy with them, but once I had the device in my hand, I actually think it's a good idea. Um, all buttons as you press them have to go down somewhat to actually be pressed, to actually be buttons, and these are raised above the surface so that you don't have to press them below the surface, and that may be an a interesting concept to wrap your head around, but the fact that they're up above the surface means the device can be even thinner than it already is. And it is a darn thin device at only 11 and a half millimeters in depth. It is a lot smaller than the 14.3 millimeters or four millimeters of the Blackberry Torch. I mean, you, uh, you 9800. I mean, you hold the 9800 and the 9850 together and you can see there's definitely a, a difference in, in the widths and the depths of these phones. And the 9800 is uh, about a half ounce heavier than the 9850. And, and this device, the way that it's, it's large, it spreads its area out over a fairly large surface, it feels a lot lighter in the hand. But it feels comfortable in the hand. It feels like a solid device. It, it, it doesn't feel like anything's loose in there. This feels like a, a if you'll pardon the expression, a brick o phone. It, it is a really solid, well-made device in my opinion. One of the things that's been, been made of a bit are the uh, small buttons uh, used for the volume and uh, play pause as well as the um, convenience key. Now if you, if you look really closely at the device you see that there's actually a very small area f that they could have been in and that's one of the reasons that they were forced to be so thin. Uh, it also emphasizes that that whole this is a thin device uh, mantra that that research emotion seems to have been chanting as they as they built this device they're very thin but they're very usable you know the size of a button and you'll notice they're a, they're a lot thinner than say the buttons on the the torch uh, 9800 but the thinness of the buttons in my opinion doesn't seem to affect how you use them uh, because as you run your thumb down the side of the device, you do feel where they are, and especially that nub for play pause, it really gives you a sense of, of what button you're pressing. And if you've never picked up a BlackBerry Torch 9800 in the dark and tried to fumble for the volume keys, it might not make a whole lot of uh, sense to you, but if you're having trouble finding out, figuring out which one's the up and which one's the down, 
that little nub in the middle actually seems to me at least to be a, a, a really big help. Um, the device, of course, does run a 1.2 gigahertz Snapdragon processor inside. There's 768 megabytes of RAM, and it does have a dedicated graphics processing unit inside, uh, which Research in Motion calls their uh, Liquid Graphics, and it, it does look really nice. Uh, I've gone ahead and pulled out a couple of the panes already in the home screen, but everything moves quickly, fast, don't even have to worry about it. It is a very nice, very fast phone, and in my humble opinion, this is the BlackBerry experience we've all been waiting on. Now, let's take a look at a couple of the things inside of, of this BlackBerry 7 experience. One of the things I'm most impressed with is actually the web browsing, and uh, not so much for the virtual device agreement. But web pages do come up quite nicely. There's, there's really no lag get a little bit of checkerboarding, but honestly, this is a fairly picture and video and stuff heavy post that I'm, I'm looking at here on Crackberry. Uh, of course, you also get the pinch to zoom, which is virtually instantaneous, uh, something that I've never seen on my BlackBerry Torch 9800. Uh, pictures, video, everything loads pretty nicely. One of the nice things about uh, the souped up power and RAM and, and whatnot of the, uh, of the device is that a lot of the HTML5 videos, if I can press this button, it's a little hard to do from the side, um, but a lot of the HTML5 videos that didn't really play uh, on OS 6, even though they theoretically could, they just didn't, but um, in OS 7, the videos on, on various websites, if I can get this one to go, it was working just a minute ago, I promise you. Um, Next. There we go. Uh, videos on, on websites do actually run. Uh, this is... Let me turn this down just a little bit. This is actually a video on uh, one of my other favorite uh, websites that starts with the word crack. This is from cracked.com. But uh, this is an HTML5 video that's playing perfectly well within the browser. And, and I honestly think that's amazing. Now, you're not going to get Flash videos uh, to play in the browser, except for YouTube, but again, that's that's going back to HTML5 videos. But the more videos I can play inside my browser, the happier I am. Um, and one of the other good things that the that the increased uh, processor and 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 uh, graphics capability is is inside of applications. So if we'll take a look at a an application like Twitter here, and you can see scrolling up and down is no problem at all. It, it goes quickly, easily, and it'd go faster if it weren't loading. If I had uh, been smart, would have preloaded all this for you. Uh, but you can see it just scrolls very, very quickly. And if we try to do uh, the same thing on the Torch 9800, uh, it's decent, but nowhere near, uh, near as fast. Uh, looking at the video camera, of course, you do have a 720p uh, video camera capable recording, and there is an example of the recording a little bit later in this post, um, but if you take a look at the uh, video camera, and of course you're going to get similar results with the uh, still camera, but of course, you know, record a video, watch it, and then come back, just like just like Kevin did in his video, I'm totally ripping it off right now. Um, and it, of course you are recording in 720p. Uh, if you're using the video, uh, excuse me, the still camera, you can get all the way up to 2560 by 1920 pixels. Uh, so you can get quite uh, large pictures. Of course, you can change that to lower it if you're going to try to send it by text message. I, I wouldn't recommend sending that largest of, of picture sizes via text message. One of the things that may not be uh, noticeable right away is, of course, the quality that you're seeing in the in the display. It's 253 pixels per inch in that display. It looks gorgeous, uh, but one of the ways I figured out best to uh, show just how good it is is I've got a clip loaded up here from Doctor Who, and uh, they're not quite synced, but you know, you can see that there is a, uh, at least I hope you can see, is that there's much more depth and color in the 9850 uh, than you get in the 9800. And as you see, the 9850 has very tiny black bars bordering the video, whereas the 9800 has huge, gigantic ones. And that's because uh, the 9800 is a 4x3 display, whereas uh, 
9850 is a uh, five by three display. It's much closer to that that uh, 16 by uh, nine resolution uh, aspect ratio that that we're all so used to nowadays. Uh, one of the other things is that we need to show you typing on the Torch 9850 and this is going to be a little bit difficult to do because of the way I'm facing the camera uh, but the keyboard is uh, completely updated uh, just like the keyboard on the Blackberry Playbook uh, the sh shift key has changed you've got the caps lock key has changed uh, one of the things I really like is underneath the backspace key is no longer the enter key and you won't be sending off so many mistaken emails at the time uh, but the uh, virtual keyboard, I do have a little bit of problem with this uh, arrow here in the middle. I hit it a lot, but the virtual keyboard uh, is pretty good. It's been keeping up with me pretty well, although it's not keeping up with me well now. As I said, it's a little bit more difficult to do these things on video because you're not holding the devices as you, as you normally would. Um, so you do have to take that, please take that a little bit into consideration. Uh, and we'll try... I could actually type. Wow. B R O W N F O X. All right. This is my fault. I don't normally hold this device three feet away from me when I type. But the, the keyboard, please do trust me, it works a lot better than uh, the keyboard that's on the 9800. And you'll notice one of the things about this is the device is so wide. It does allow for both finger, both thumbs to be used at the same time. I know when I was using the 9800, uh, my thumbs would. would constantly fight to see who is actually going to press press the button. There's a lot of great things about this new uh, operating system and one last thing I wanted to show you before I go is of course the voice activated search and it's it's pretty good. Uh, you could of course say something like options and it'll find Austin. Options. And it's still finding Austin. Perhaps it does have something to do with the fact that I am a few feet away uh, from the phone. Options. There we go. Uh, but it, you, you know, you can also use universal search uh, for longer things too, like Crackberry is the best blog ever, and it and it, it got block, but yeah, that's pretty close. And if you wanted to. You could search that phrase right there in uh, in the web browser. So that's the 9850 in a nutshell, trying to show off some of the nicer features of the phone. Uh, please go ahead and read the whole review to get the whole story. I'm Joseph Holder for CrackBerry.com. CrackBerry.com.